How you doing guys? It's Kaz here. If you're watching this video, more than likely you've purchased one of our Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive gamepad adapters, joystick adapters. Um, this is revision 5. Um, as you see, it's different than what you've seen in the past. It has a notch out on the PCB. And that notch is there so that this fits the, um, excuse me, Amiga 600s without an extension. Um, we had to manipulate the DB9 a little bit, but without an extension, this should fit right into the Amiga um, without any problems. Um, like I said, this is revision five, so it's uh, slightly different. Uh, if you're not sure why you need one of these, um, the Sega Genesis controllers and the uh, uh, mega pads or whatever they call them um, are in my opinion one of the best c controllers out there I grew up on Sega they're the best you can use them on a Commodore 64 uh, VIC-20 uh, 128 but the wiring is slightly different and if you're playing a game and somehow you um, hit the keyboard or the game calls for a key to be pressed while using the joystick, there's a chance you can burn out the CIA. So somebody much smarter than me uh, came up with an idea, uh, I think it was back in 94 maybe, from Commodore World, episode, uh, Volume 1, Number 5, well, there's only one, one season of that, so um, to put resistors or excuse me, diodes in line with the um, buttons to prevent that overload. Fast forward to the future, a gentleman uh, named Suko Pira, P-E-R-A, um, and if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I apologize, uh, created an open source design uh, much better than taking the controller apart and soldering in um, diodes so that's what we're going to do today um, i have this assembled one um, it's really simple a couple of uh, switches um, series of diodes some resistors db9 male db9 female and um, you know pcb so i say let's get started all right, this is what your kit's going to look like when you get it. All right. First thing you're going to notice is your board. You're going to have your BC547 uh, transistors. You're going to have a total of two of those. Your 10K uh, resistors, you're going to have four. Your 1N4148 diodes, you're going to have a total of six of those. You're going to have your DB9 male, your DB9 female, and you're going to have three of the switches. All right, let's get started. I usually, what I do is I start by wiping down the PCB with some rubbing alcohol. And you're going to grab one of the, the resistors like this. Now, when I start assembling a board, I start from the smallest or the flattest to the surface and work my way up. So I grab one of the diodes, excuse me, diodes. And again, doesn't matter the direction, but for aesthetic purposes, I like to keep them all going the same way just to make it look nice. That one's being stubborn. There we go. She's nice and flush. Um, 
not necessary, but I like to use a little bit of flux. And I'll just usually do that whole row. Excuse me, I'm new to doing these videos. And I get my trusty soldering iron. And then what we're gonna do, there's a little dab there and a little dab there. And now you can put these all in together if you like, or you can do one at a time. That one's a little bit off from my taste. I like them all going the same. Same way. There we go. of this assembly. I just wanted to show you how I like to do it. So I will skip to the next part. Okay, next we're going to install the 1N4148 diode. As you can see, it's got a black line on it right there. That line corresponds right there with the board. Bend them, you know, roughly the size of the hole. Push it through. Now, normally I'll do a couple of these at a time, but it's hard to solder with the camera. A little bit of flux. in the soldering iron. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Grab another one. Again, making sure it's oriented correctly. Push it through. This thing is really pretty simple to install. If you do buy the kit, you should be able to do it yourself with a mild soldering ability. Okay, I'll do one more. Again, make sure it's oriented correctly. Right there. Get over there. Perfect. I use the 0.5 millimeter flux core solder. Solder. Sorry, got a little my accent there. Works good for me. Uh, the full one millimeter is way too thick. I will probably use that on the DB9 connectors because they're so big. So, all right, that's that. Now, fast forward to the next part. All right, as you can see, I got all the diodes in. The next part I like to do is the BC547 transistors. Now, it's pretty simple. They are um, on the PCB. It's marked which way they go, so you don't have to really be an electrical engineer to figure it out. Now these little buggers I like to pre-bend. I will bend the sides in a little bit here, and I will bend that back one a little bit 
because they come flat. They come on a sheet like this and they are flat. So what I do, see how they're flat? I do that pre-bend. It makes it a lot easier on you to get them into the hole. Oops, maybe. And then gently push them through. Sometimes you have to pull them through instead of push them through. And these little buggers right here are pain. I probably should have put a little bit of flux on that beforehand. There's not a lot of room in there to fill with solder. So there you go. Trying to do this behind the camera here. So excuse me. There's that one. And that one. And that one. And there we go. Alright. And then just trim off the ends. If you don't like that, like I don't, I will just ease it off a little bit and it'll go right into the holes where it's supposed to go. Perfect. All right. So, that is how you get the transistors in there. Now, what I do is the Oh my god, they're JC, what are they called? They're JC, I can't even remember. Two position switch, six prongs. And I will put one in. And usually what I do, I put one in, oops. Again, doesn't matter which way they go. I like to put the lettering up so that it all looks the same. I'll usually just tack one of these. And then I'll move over to the next one. Okay. Then, oh. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's why we tack them. We tack the wrong one. That's hilarious. It's hard to do this behind the camera here. Okay. Once they're all tacked, I double check. And then. And we'll start soldering them. Oops, what I usually do, so not to melt the switch, is I will go from switch to switch, giving it time to cool off. And it goes, oops, there it goes. Come on, get in there, there we go. Again, hard to do behind the camera.
go. It's more. There we go. All right. Boom. And that's done. And that's the switches. And they all work. Perfect. Now, we're going to put in the DB9 male. 90 degree. Pushes right through there. And for this, I really like to use my thicker solder. Soldered in. Now we're going to put in DB9 connector female. Oops, almost forgot some flux here. Same thing. Okay. All right, that's it. That's assembled. Now, I if I assemble them for you, I will modify the DB9 plug, the uh, female, and notch it off for you, uh, unless you request otherwise. But um, so it fits in the Amiga 600s, and these will just need to be unscrewed and. So it can plug right in. Uh, real simple. And you can see here the configuration setup. 64 Amiga setup. The firing buttons. Uh, it's real simple. Um, so uh, we'll be sell, we sell these on eBay and on Commodore Forever.net. Uh, uh, if you got any questions, email us and uh, we'll do our best to give you a hand. Anyway, that's how it's done.